Hello everybody, welcome to my big tutorial about zero tick pulses and instant repeaters. So I prepared a lot of stuff. I will begin with the very basics of zero ticks, but even if you are an advanced uh, yeah, zero tick user, you might find one of new uh, applications that you didn't know before. Okay, so let's start uh, with the very basic what is a zero tick pulse and what is it good for. So a zero tick pulse is creating by powering and depowering a piston or line of redstone within the same game tick. Uh, this could be achieved for example with this very basic zero tick generator um, that works with the update order. So comparators always um, power stuff after repeaters. So basically you would power the uh, iron block here and then in the same game tick, but just a little bit later, uh, the piston would be extended and then the block turns into block 36 uh, within the same game tick and uh, the redstone dust in the back is depowered again. So if I press this button, you can see that the sticky piston will send the block over instantly. And it would also uh, retract them uh, almost instantly. So I have the tick speed mod by uh, QTech installed, so we can see it slower. So now it's 20 times slower, and you can see that it's really instant. And yeah, sending up over a block uh, only works with uh, sticky pistons. So if I would do the same with a uh, non-sticky piston, then it would take a while. Yeah, basically it would be sent over in three game ticks. Okay, then yeah, there are some variations of this basic design. Um, for example, um, in the uh, if you have the repeaters in the uh, north-south axis, and then they are powered um, yeah in a logical order. So this repeater would be powered before that one. So uh, if you have this in the uh, north-south axis, you could also use repeaters. You don't have to use a comparator. But uh, in this direction, um, it doesn't work. It, it could work, but the lo uh, behavior is really locational. So yeah, only works reliably in this direction. Uh, what you could also do in every direction, which is non-locational, uh, setting the ingoing repeater to two. So uh, he is updated before this piston, uh, this repeater. So yeah, this would also work. Okay, yeah, this is the very basic uh, zero tick pulse generator. Of course, there's some variations to it, so you could also um, use the uh, behavior that torches like comparators update um, after uh, repeaters, uh, but there's no uh, yeah, a preference between torches and comparators, so they can update before and after each other. So, yeah, it's basically the same. You would power the block, and yeah, one tick later, both. Um, so you power this block and in the same game tick also the torch uh, turns off and yeah, would also create a zero tick pulse. So you could also make for example uh, a tileable zero tick pulse generator design. So this would be one white tileable. So it's basically the same. We have two ticks of delay here and also two ticks here with the torches and the uh, torch would turn on the same moment, but uh, later within the tick as the repeater here. So yeah, and this would be tileable, so you can do the same next to each other. And have the input just at a different time. So repeater, let's have one here and here. I made a little error here, so I had to make a cut, but now it's set up properly. So we have a zero tick pulse, four game ticks uh, apart from each other. Okay, um, let's get to the next uh, zero tick generator, uh, which is not only good for zero ticks, but it's one of the yeah, best circuits in the whole game, in my opinion. So we use the sand zero tick generator. Um, this works by but powering the piston uh, by powering the sand block at the top and then um, the same game tick 
this piston at the bottom would update this piston. So the uh, sand at the bottom would be pushed up and also the sand at the top would turn into block 36. So basically this piston is powered and depowered within the same game tick. Um, there's a little downside of it. If you would power this thing uh, for too long, uh, then you would get two pulses because the sand would fall down again and this would still be on and then you get two pulses. So yeah, let's see the action. So you get his first zero tick pulse, then the sand falls down, this is still on, and you get the second zero tick pulse. So if you would have a one second signal, this might even be is useful. So yeah, then you get two pulses. Uh, yeah, the cooldown is exactly 11 game ticks. You would get a zero tick pulse every 11 game ticks if you have uh, a constant signal here. So by having a yeah, signal that's shorter than 10 game ticks or shorter than 11, yeah, you only get a zero tick pulse, uh, one zero tick pulse. So now it turns off and then yeah, turns back to normal. Okay, um, over here I have prepared a variant of this, which is also quite useful. Um, this would create a zero tick pulse, and then um, the piston at the bottom um, would be still would get powered again because there's the the iron block. So you would get a second pulse um, after the zero tick pulse. Uh, so basically one game tick later and after three game ticks uh, the piston could extract again and yeah let's let's just see it in action so so zero tick pulse then three tick game ticks later this is uh, powered again and uh, yeah four tick game ticks later it's depowered so the piston basically gets a uh, one game tick pulse and grabs the uh, iron block again and yeah causing the piston to retract so let's see it once more so zero tick pulse and then four game ticks later it retracts the block again so yeah might be useful to send a block over and push in another block for example so you could push two blocks uh, in for game ticks. Yeah. Okay, uh, there's even another use. Uh, because you saw it, um, the, the second block that is sent over instantly uh, would also still be powered. And the piston here uh, just doesn't uh, react to it. Uh, so you would power the redstone line in a game tick, then it turns off, would turn on again within the same game tick and be powered for two game ticks. So you can see it visually here. So get a zero tick pulse and then it stays on, but the piston doesn't do anything because it has a three game tick cooldown. So you can basically get a zero tick pulse and a two game tick pulse uh, in one contraptions. In one contraption. And yeah, this is uh, quite useful uh, because the comparator here wouldn't react to the zero tick pulse, but does react to the two game tick pulse. And basically you get one of those pulses, uh, a two game tick pulse that you could send up a torch tower. So two game tick pulses are quite useful to uh, if I want a, piston, a sticky piston to lose its block. So let's also see this in action. So yeah, the comparator doesn't react and now it does react. And yeah, you get a two game tick pulse that you can send up a torch tower, which might be useful for a lot of contraptions to build compact or yeah, there you, you will find an application if you if you might need it. Okay, um, yeah. So he, over here is a practical uh, use of this behavior with the comparator. So yeah, you could also send a, a two game tick pulse with a comparator, not only with torches, and we used it here. So this. Circuit here uh, is a double piston extender that uh, could grab this block, um, but could also grab this block, depending where you power it and with what pulse length. So yeah, let's do the um, comparator one first. So we would power it once and twice, and you got the block over from there. But you could also grab, for example, uh, this block by powering it with a shorter pulse. And then only the front piston uh, would uh, react to the pulse. The 
uh, comparator that doesn't react to the to this type of uh, two game tick pulse. So yeah, you here you can see the difference. So let's see it again. Powering the back once, and once more. So that's basically a double piston extender. You could also push it just by powering it twice. Yeah, here are just some other examples of uh, circuits that could do similar things. So sending a two game tick pulse uh, upwards in a torch tower. So this both are falling edge ones. So power it, then yeah, the block. Uh, uh, the piston loses its block, and yeah, this is uh, also quite similar. So we would depower this. Uh, um, yeah, this torch will turn on, but uh, it would turn off uh, two game ticks later, but by a comparator. So it's the basic principle: by depowering something two game ticks later with a comparator, the, the torch tower would process the two game tick signal. So as you can see the piston loses the block. Okay, um, yeah, back to the topic. Here's uh, an example uh, how you could uh, send over a block instantly that would be pushed inside. So let's just simulate it by placing it here. And the uh, yeah, we create a serotic pulse here. But we only create a serotic pulse here uh, by but powering this piston and updating in it within the same game tick. So if we would power the piston directly, um, yeah, like this, then um, you don't get a serotic pulse. So you need to update it with another piston. So basically, this happens. But, uh, um, yeah. Okay. Let's see it again. I'll build it correctly. So, butt powering diagonally and updating it with another piston. Okay, this could be useful to transport sand, or yeah, there are a few uh, practical applications to this. Okay, um, next example is um, another surgic pulse generator. Um, we use the fact here that one of those pistons would be activated first and uh, another one would be activated after that. So first we push the uh, iron block here over which will no longer yeah, block the signal from going up and then within the same game tick but just later in the game tick the redstone block will also be pushed over. So we, have, we this line is powered for just a fragment within the same game tick. And we make sure to update um, the left piston first by using a, a repeater here and a comparator on the other side. So yeah, it's also a way to get a zero tick pulse. The advantage of this is that um, you could get an instant zero tick pulse, but um, yeah, it's locational. So let's use a button here and let's see it. So yeah, it's the same contraption and yeah, you get a serotic pulse. But this would be locational um, because um, it could happen that um, this piston here would update uh, too early. So yeah, in the best case, this piston updates before that one. And the way uh, Redstone Dust updates pistons isn't uh, yeah, logical. So could happen that this one updates this first and also that this one updates this first. So this is uh, locational. There are some locations where this wouldn't work. Yeah, here's an example of a falling uh, edge pulse generator. So it's basically the same. Uh, we, we retract the iron block before the redstone block. So yeah, same principle, but we only take the output from here. So let's turn the torch off and we also get a uh, serotic pulse. But as you can see, we um, butt power the lower piston, but it doesn't react to it. Only the uh, one at the top does react directly to it. The reason why the lower piston uh, yeah, doesn't uh, react to the signal is that the signal is too short, so the serotic pulses can have a different length. Um, yeah, and it depends on the update order. 
so here you can see we depower the piston of the iron block directly and the one of the redstone block is in a update chain so this piston here updates this piston which will in return update this piston so if, uh, yeah, chain of three and in the worst case this piston updates before that one so in the worst case there's a two uh, piston difference between those uh, which is enough to uh, power one uh, one piston directly but not um, uh, power the budded one um, yeah uh, in the best case uh, this piston is uh, updated first and then this one uh, three pistons later um, which will cause this to work in some locations um, but not in this one so in here you can make this uh, work in every location so just add another iteration of piston updates so we let's uh, let's that goes up and that goes down and the piston arm would uh, update this one and uh, at last this one so chain of four pistons and yeah now let's turn it off and now the butted piston also reacted to the serotic pulse because it was long enough so if you would make a chain here then uh, an another iteration somehow uh, then again it wouldn't work with the third update iteration here unless you add a fifth one here okay uh, and you could combine the rising edge serotic generator with the falling edge serotic uh, generator into a dual edge serotic generator. So that's what we do here. Um, so basically, it's the same as before by uh, pushing the redstone block a little bit after the uh, iron block. Uh, we get a short pulse here, and then we do the same. We reject the iron block first and then the redstone block later and yeah that's how we get two pulses and the second pul we get the second pulse when uh, the uh, the button is done with powering so let's see it and yeah, if it turns, turns off then we get the second serotic pulse yeah, and this is quite useful to get serotic pulses uh, with uh, very few uh, very little time in between so here we have a two uh, redstone tick uh, pulse or four game tick pulse and this will cause uh, so we get two serotic pulses for game tick support which is quite good so yeah two uh, redstone tick pulses uh, the redstone ticks is the shortest delay in between but it could also make more than yeah but two is uh, the lowest possible so uh, one redstone tick will cause it to fail so yeah to just le lose the block and don't uh, get them back. So I have to push it again. Technically you could also power a, a piston every three game ticks so you could receive a serotic pulse every three game ticks and do an action. So yeah this is a little bit more complicated. This is a contraption that creates a serotic pulse, two serotic pulses, three game ticks apart from each other. Um, let's see it first. Yeah this is quite fast. Um, so here's how it works. So we have the basic um, dual edge pulse generator again, like before, but by uh, extracting the redstone block, uh, this piston here is powered three game ticks later, which will uh, push this redstone block up and would remove the power source. So we have a three game tick pulse here which will cause those um, pistons to reject the redstone block again. And this piston at the top uh, just sends stuff down because this one is also powered and depowered in the same game tick so uh, it would lose the slime block structure and has to be sent back down again. And um, yeah you might ask yourself why couldn't I power this directly with a three game tick pulse? Um, that's because of the update order. So here we create a three game tick pulse by cutting uh, the redstone line. So this line is cut after three game ticks and you will see that this doesn't work. So you 
you only get a zero-tick, uh, uh, one zero-tick pulse, but not a second one, because again, this pulse uh, is short at the falling edge. So you need to do it directly um, with this uh, yeah setup here. And this also has to be at least a four game tick pulse to make sure uh, this is powered long enough. So then you get two Zurich pulses over there. I uh, made one that's uh, more compact, but I wanted to start with that one because it's easier to explain. So basically the same happens here. Um, this piston here would reject after three game ticks. Um, you might think, yeah, it would reject instantly, but it's still butt powered from the top. So this redstone block is sent over, it arrives after three game ticks. Then, yeah, this redstone block is also pushed up, and yeah, uh, this is no longer butt powered, also receives an update and retracts after three game ticks. And uh, then uh, this one will also uh, retract again because it's no longer powered. So here we have the update chain here. Those pistons will all retract again, and yeah, this redstone block will also retract again. Technically, this is all set uh, up with a Zertic pulse again, and then uh, three game ticks later sent back down again. So let's see it really in slow motion, so we might understand it a little bit more, what happens there. So, the first Zertic pulse, as soon as this repeater turns on. Any moment. Okay, first zero tick pulse. So then we send this over. So now this retracts and we got the second zero tick pulse. And then send back to down again. This also extends again because uh, it's directly powered here and also but powered from the top again. So this is the most compact way to make a three game tick dual edge Zyrtec pulse generator. So next station is Zyrtec chaining. So here we have uh, two rising edge Zyrtec pulse generator that are in a update chain. Um, so we get the first Zyrtec pulse here. So this block is pushed out, then there's slime block attached to it, so redstone block is pushed down again. So this is powered and depowered, which will uh, cause this piston to extract and then reject again, sending the second piston over there. Then the update chain is continued, uh, there's a, just the auxiliary piston in there, and then we have the second uh, rising edge, rising edge uh, zero tick pulse generator, which will power the uh, second piston when it's sent over there. So let's make it a little bit slower and then yeah, pushes the block for zero tick pulse. Oh, that's basically it and that's how you would chain uh, yeah, zero tick pulses. So we would have uh, two separate um, rising edge zero tick pulse generators then, which are not in a power chain, it could happen that, for example, this fretzel line turns on and off before this uh, piston does anything. So, yeah, you need to have it in an, an update chain to get more actions in a logical order. So the source of the update chain is this redstone line here, and there's only signal strength 15, so the number of uh, Zyrtec generators uh, that you could attach to a single redstone line yeah, is kind of limited. And I will later show you how you could make an unlimited amount of chained Zyrtec pulses. Okay, next station, let's see how you could make uh, the other pulse generators work with budded pistons. So with the simple one, you would only you could only power pistons directly and wouldn't work with butt power. So one way to fix that problem is also to make a piston chain again. So this block is powered directly. Then later, the comparator will butt power this piston, and this piston is powered directly, which will update it. And then you could work with butted pistons and zero ticks. So that's one way to get this working. Also, could uh, do the same with the sand. Also, you already have one iteration in there. Uh, so in most cases, 
this would already work, um, but it's locational. So I didn't find any uh, good rules for it, um, just what I experienced. So in most cases when the redstone dust is leading upwards, um, but powering works with this um, yeah, sand to take post generator. And it doesn't work if the redstone dust would go back down again so you don't have enough iterations in there. Um, yeah, that's just a practical observation I made. There's no no real rule, so also the upwards uh, redstone could also fail in some locations. Um, so you could also make a ch update chain of the sand one, of course. So this piston is powered directly, updating this one, and then the third one, and then you're guaranteed that even if the redstone dust would go back down again, that the button piston, a uh, one button piston, would work. So here I made a chain of three. One, two, three, and this doesn't work again. So you would need a fourth piston if you want the third piston work, just like before. So yeah, that's how you can make the sand one non-locational for some applications where you need budded pistons. So let's also cover instant repeaters. This is the yeah, simplest, simplest one uh, by pushing a block and letting it turn into block 36, which is transparent. The redstone could go up, powering the next piston, instantly turning into block 36 powering the next piston and so on and so on. So this is how a uh, instant repeater would work. So this is a very simple one, it has some flaws. Mainly that um, the pistons have a delay when retracting again. So if you have a very short pulse, then yeah, this could happen. And if you have a lot of iterations, your initial signal uh, has to be um, very long. So if, uh, 1000 block long line, the input signal has to be, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds or something like that. Very long. Yeah, and here's a way how you could prevent that flaw. Um, so let's see the first. So uh, all the pistons would retract at the same moment. Um, yeah, let's see how it works. So by powering this block, this torch will turn off. And also this would turn off what previously powered the redstone dust here, and yeah, let's turn it back off, so you can see it's powered, and this, when this block turns into block 36, then it instantly powers the next block, but the source is uh, yeah, uh, turned off after uh, four game ticks, and so this, the others uh, won't retract instantly, we power this block again, as soon as it's, as it's in this position here. Um, yeah, which will cause this um, yeah, to be on again. And when you retract the block, uh, it's back in the position of the two game ticks, or three game game ticks. So this would turn back on again uh, when it's when the block is already back here again. So that's how it works. Quite useful. Um, Here's another method of an instant repeater. Um, we use a Sirtic generator. So by powering the iron block here, this piston at the top is powered. So this redstone block is sent over. But at the moment, but powers this piston. Um, yeah, it also gets updated. And basically, it retracts the block at the bottom. So this piston here is powered and depowered within the game's same game tick and then the redstone block is sent over because it's a sticky piston. And when it's sent over, then this uh, pis uh, the piston at the bottom will attract, uh, retract again, and the piston at the top will also be powered again, and as soon as you would turn it off, um, it would retract the redstone block again. So let's see it first, what happens, how this happens, and then as soon as you depower it, uh, I would reject the block at the top. Yeah, and you could make, you can also make a, ch a chain out of that. So here with the second instant repeater, 
where the same happens. So also this redstone block is sent over instantly. And this is how you could make uh, an instant repeater uh, with the surgic pulse here. So, and for the instant repeater to reset itself, it has to be powered at least with a 7 game tick signal. So we have an 8 game tick signal here, and as you can see it would reset itself. So if you would power it for only a 6 game tick signal, then the redstone block would remain behind in that position. Because this block wouldn't be powered when it's sent back again. So. It only loses the block, the piston at the top, but doesn't recover it. But if it's uh, powered long enough, so let's slow down once more, you can see it. Okay, um, you could also use the instant repeaters for zero tick chaining. So for example here we have two separate um, zero tick pulse generators they are also instant and they basically do the same uh, as like in the example before pushing the second piston over and also activating it in the same game tick of a zero tick pulse and yeah this works because we have an update chain again so all of those are updated before all of the piston actions happen here and then the second instant uh, surgical pulse generator works. So yeah, it's already slow. Yep, that would be a method to chain an infinite amount of surgic pulses. Okay, over here we have a more advanced setup. Um, so the the problem is I want to get those diamond blocks as fast as possible into this position here. And yeah, the fastest possible uh, would be making a zero tick chain, sending the second piston over and retracting the, the diamond blocks. Then after three game ticks, activate the piston in the back once more, getting the second piston again. And after six game ticks, activating those again with a zero tick pulse, getting the diamond blocks as soon as possible. And yeah, that's what we do here. So over here we have once more one of those dual edge uh, three game tick uh, zero tick generators, the compact one, if you remember it. And over here we have also yeah, something special. We use a chained uh, zero tick generator with sand. So we use the first zero tick pulse here to send over that sand. Um, and as soon as the sand arrives, because it arrives there the, within the same game tick, but um, after the piston in the back um, send over the second block, then uh, we also create a surgic pulse with the sand one. So that's the sand surgic pulse generator, and that's the second one, which happens six game ticks later. So yeah, let's see it in action. So that's how we recover the sand, so it resets again. Yeah, let's see it also in real speed. Let's get the diamond blocks back again. So yeah, that's the fastest way to get those diamond blocks uh, in that position. So this is a practical use, for example, in a tree farm where I want to grab some logs, like in my uh, universal tree farm. So this, yeah quite practical actually to make it fast. So another use of those instant repeaters is that they are very good to make uh, an adjustable pulse length. So if this input signal is short enough then yeah, the block is lost and depending when you send the block back you get a signal with an, with an adjustable uh, delay. So you could send a block back, for example, with a normal piston and depending when uh, the piston here is sending the block back, this will also turn off instantly. So yeah, for example, having four game tick delay here, this would be on for four game ticks. So yeah, that's a great way to adjust the signal length. 
So here's for example uh, a great way to adjust the single length to game ticks. So yeah, as soon as this redstone line is turned off, uh, it will take two game ticks until this torch is turned on, sending the block back again. So we have a two game tick signal which will cause a, a sticky piston to lose its block in front. Yeah, so it is yeah, very nice for that. Okay, um, so back to the simple instant repeater. They are also great to make a dual edge, um, yeah, two game tick pulse generator. So here's how it works. Um, as soon as you power the block here, uh, this block is sent over and also instantly the redstone line will turn on and then two game ticks later it will turn off to so get a two game tick signal. But uh, when you reject the block again, then um, it takes three game ticks for the block uh, to retract and this is turned off, so two game ticks later this is turned on and yeah, right before the block is back again uh, you get uh, one game tick signal, a second one game tick signal, so this will cause the piston with the first two game tick signal it will cause the piston to lose its block and when you turn it back off again it gets another one game tick signal to get the block back again. So it is, uh, yeah, Hel Helvin showed this to me, it's super useful uh, to make compact wiring, for example my simple universal tree farm use that uh, to make very compact wiring. Okay, here are some other examples how you could adjust the signal length. So uh, this would also make a four game tick signal, which uh, yeah, extend and recheck the piston so it doesn't lose the block. And yeah, you could also make a three game tick signal just by pushing a redstone block into here. So yeah, then that's the shortest signal where a sticky piston would extend and recheck without losing the block. Might also, it's also quite useful for fast tree farms, for example. Okay, you could also adjust the signal length very easily here. Just by adding repeater, you would add two game ticks for the day. This would create a five game tick signal, just for example. But you could also make a seven game tick signal, nine, eleven, and so on. Uh, this isn't too useful, but it's also a way to create a serotic pulse. So. When this redstone block is sent over, could also instantly send it back. Um, yeah, by uh, making a, uh, one piston iteration again, uh, you could use the uh, surgic pulse here. So if you would do something like this, then there's a very good chance that the piston here uh, doesn't get powered because the uh, block is already sent back again. So let's see that. And did it work? Uh, it's more. Yeah, it did work. But yeah, that, that was only lucky. So it's really locational. So let's try it in this position. Uh, <laughs> now I'm really lucky with that. Normally it never works. So yeah, this is really locational. Um, you, you need to, uh, normally you need an iteration um, for it to work reliably. So yeah, I was just lucky here. That's the locational behavior of redstone dust. And the other problem is that if you do something like that, then this piston here doesn't get updated. So you need to update it uh, manually. So I don't know what you could do. So. Let's just add some redstone. This is just one example to update the piston at the bottom again. Okay, we've covered a lot of zero tick tech stuff today. So yeah, finally, uh, let's get to the most famous zero tick pulse generator. This was shown by Pi, but I never use it really. Um, yeah, this is quite useful to chain a lot of serotic pulses, so it's basically uh, instant repeaters all over the place and you use the serotic um, uh, f that you create by setting over the block here and also instantly rejecting it. Uh, it's quite useful to, to make compact serotic chaining, but there's one big downside, so this, the block is sent in this position here, powering that piston which 
no longer but powers this piston, so the block is also instantly retracted. So because this piston is power depowered the same game tick, uh, this block is sent over here instantly. And yeah, because the the block was here just for a moment within the same game tick, we also power and depower this piston here. Uh, yeah, sending over this block instantly and so on, so the chain here and yeah, then when this uh, piston at the bottom is directly powered from the top then it pushes the redstone block back into the hole here um, powering this piston, getting that block back again and so on and so on uh, but the problem is you get two pulses so yeah, so you could send over uh, a block instantly with a lot of iterations to get the second pulse, and the second pulse uh, really isn't useful <laughs> in a tree farm, for example. So there's, for me, it has just limited use for for this one here, but I think it's the most famous theoretic pulse generator. Okay, I've really covered a lot. I uh, don't think it, it's that much. Um, yeah, hope it was useful for you. Uh, of course, I didn't cover everything that's possible, so. It's just my uh, limited view on the topic and what I find useful. There are tons of other applications, I guess. So uh, when somebody is uh, really into door making, very fast door making, then you might have uh, another idea how to use it. And yeah, so I covered what I use mostly and what I find useful. Hope this is also useful for you. And yeah, I didn't invent all of that stuff, so I also was inspired by other people. So just to name a few, Cellulens and Defanif were, I think, the first ones that uh, came up with instant repeaters and theoretic pulses. I'll also link their videos. Then Pi made a one hour long video about the topic, which is also quite useful. Uh, you could also watch that. Also, yeah, it's a little bit limited on uh, serotic chaining and not too useful for tree farms <laughs> uh, applications where you don't transport a single block. And yeah, also uh, got help from Helvins, showed me uh, s some stuff, so, which is also Cycraft. And Nasm Nasmus helped me with the dual edge serotic pulse generator. So, yeah, also thanks to those guys. Okay, so yeah, that's the end of the video. Hope this was useful for you. Have a good day and goodbye.